coming up this week on Stage to the Cage. So with this scan, we can check Paul's levels of muscle, body fat, water. So not only does it give us an idea of his progress throughout the camp in terms of fat loss, but it also gives me a really good idea of where we're at in preparation for the cut week when he's going to make weight. Fucking overtake you, you mental, mate! I haven't had any action for a month, apart from Pamela Henderson, that's it. <laughs> people don't think, people don't realise how strong I am. The pressure I've got when I'm on top is very good. I can win. I can win this fight. I've been training since before Christmas for this fight. Missing out on time with your family, time with your friends. Make your dad proud. Make your brother proud. Fuck. This has been a year of my life training for this shit. Yeah. This has been a year of my life. Yeah. When you are in the midst of something, when you are totally consumed by it, it's sometimes very hard to see just how far you've come. That is the blessing and the curse of progress. Everybody looks and wants huge leaps and gains, whether you are looking to lose weight, learn new skills, or even, you know, train for an MMA fight. But that's not how it works. You need to dedicate yourself and understand that true progress only comes when you look at the small gains and goals over an elongated period of time. When you accept in reality that you'll not be getting 10 times better each day each session, but when your goal is just to be 1% better. 1% better every day and to make sure you show up every day to claim that 1%. That is what these two guys have done. They have shown dedication and considerable progress. It's all been based on these small goals, these small wins each day, each week. Setting the alarm clock and getting out of bed when they want to stay in for another 20 minutes. Turning up to training when they're sore, when they're aching and when they know it's a session that probably will entail them being the nail and not the hammer for two hours of their lives. Picking a salad instead of chips, saying no to a pint with mates and in some cases sacrificing time with the people that they love most so that they can put in that work to get better each day. These guys have placed themselves in the midst of this. They have been totally consumed by it and I believe there's some moments where I think they can't see just how far they have come. We are now 10 months into this journey and we are just weeks away from them actually making that walk into the AO Arena in Manchester on November 4th. To look back at the beginning of this, for me to see just what progress they have made both physically and mentally in preparation for this fight is nothing short of inspiring. Everyone watching this should be inspired and should see just what is possible if you commit yourself to something and just keep showing up. So, welcome to my hotel, welcome to my boudoir. I did the uh, wooden panelling myself. I'm gonna have a coffee. We're in, um, where are we, Josh? Buxton. We're in Buxton. We're in Buxton. Um, fucking, how do you use this thing? We're in Buxton with my show, um, which is near Manchester. It's not too far from Manchester. And my friend has got a gym in Stockport, which is about 35, 40 minutes away. So he's gonna train. He's gonna oh, set my alarm. This is, this is my life, Josh. My alarm's going off, yeah? And I wake up before my alarm every day. And I set my alarm at half six and I'm up at fucking half five every single day. Tracking my recovery. Let's see what my recovery is today. So now my sleep's pending. So it'll tell me what my recovery was. So my recovery yesterday was 19. Then it was 42. So let's see what it is today. It'll be about fucking eight, I reckon. Oh no, it's fucking frozen. I put it in the fucking freezer. That's a fridge in it. How can it be different top and bottom? Oh. How do you get the start up? Uh, 
ain't got a knife. That is a fucking proper breakfast, that. Do you have TV on, Josh? Maybe I tip my hat. We could watch Fall Fall OD and watch Stage Cage right Apparently, I've heard it's really good. People think I'm a, I think people think I'm like really vain and a poser and that, but I couldn't think of anything worse watching myself. Plus, I don't want to see how good Paul is. If he looks like fucking yeah, clearly I have some things to work on. Well, Conor McGregor, then I'm gonna not want to fight, am I? It's just as important so, to treat my team well. So I'm uh, training him I'm training uh, like he's uh, Conor McGregor. Why I'm here. You guys have to and then mm -hmm. on the I night I wanna know fail to prepare prepare to fail. Yeah. He was pretty well advanced by the time he was diagnosed. We tried to mention him. That's the most interesting bit of footage you've ever filmed. Some fucking idiot cleaning his teeth. Right. What do you think my favourite colour is? Blue. Right, you're going to get into the bad boy golf. The bad boy racer. I had a clean yesterday. Oh, for fuck's sake, I parked under a tree. What a dickhead. But I think Paul's got a Lambo, hasn't he? McLaren. You got a McLaren? Just by making people laugh? <laughs> For fuck's sake. Fucking overtake you, you mental mate! Fucking hell! It's a 30! It's a 20! Fucking that's dangerous. Get his license plate. Find it hard this week, you know. Missing um because I only had three hours at home on Sunday, which is Sunday it's supposed to be my day off. I only had, literally had three hours and then I had to leave, so I saw Leo. Watched Freddie play footy. Didn't even get any action with Soph. Fucking no action. I haven't had any action for a month. Fucking apart from Pamela Henderson, that's it. <laughs> he sends me them all the time. Sends me like inspirational talks to listen to in the car, it's fucking class. I was listening to one yesterday as I was driving here, I was like, actually these work. It's like, you can do anything you fucking want, but it's always Americans, isn't it? You can imagine a Northerner being like, hey up pal, uh, you can do whatever you want in life. <laughs> it doesn't sound the same, does it? <laughs> Come on. We are at the Manchester Institute of Health and Performance. Uh, we're gonna have a DEXA scan. Uh, just see where way to sit in. So a DEXA scan is the most accurate assessment for body composition. So it allows us to look beyond weight. So with this scan, we can check Paul's levels of muscle, body fat, water. So not only does it give us an idea of his progress throughout the camp in terms of fat loss, but it also gives me a really good idea of where we're at in preparation for the cut week when he's gonna make weight. The old school way is guesswork. Uh, quite a lot of old wives' tales, which has cost people their lives. There are, there are, there are people that have, have died from making weight wrong. Um, so what we do with the science is it gets practiced and researched for decades before we even try it with, in the real world with athletes. So we know that it's safe and it works before we even test it with the fighters. And then um, with, with Paul, we've done a lot of practicing uh, in the lead up so that it isn't guesswork on fight week and everything's measured uh, prepared and we, and we know what we're going to expect. So, if you remember from last time, yeah. um, just strip down to underwear if that's alright. Um, take off any jewellery. Then... My opinions of the weight categories, there's clearly issues in that people will try to make the lowest weight they possibly can. People take steps way too far. They do that because they don't want to be at a disadvantage or at least give the opponent an advantage. The problems that you've got though, are that until a governing body comes in or the promoters change the rules, the fighters will continue to do it. So our roles, myself and many other sports scientists in the area, we try to make it safer. We're not here to uh, kind of encourage it uh, or adopt it or recommend it. We just try to make it safer so that the fighters aren't taking unnecessary risks. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Oh, I just got the foot. Thanks a lot. Where does he come back and collect these off you? From the f first time you came in here, 23rd of December. Um, your four and a half percent body fat lower, which is a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. What's the body fat percent? Fifteen. Really good. That's that's lean on here. Mostly green. <laughs> apart, apart, <laughs> apart from your testicles. Big fat. <laughs> fat balls. That's, that's inflammation. That from being kicked. Yeah, right. right. Love handles. Why in there? With the data there on the body fat, that's that was your first your first scan. Yeah. Uh, that was the one in February, and then that's the one now. Yeah. But bearing in mind, we're now three kilo yeah. away from one week out. Okay. So we're on track. Okay. I'm buzzing with that. So keep going. Yeah, and you've and you've kept a good chunk of that body fat off from where we first so. first started. So yeah, buzzing with that. Bang on track. Right. I'm gonna have to go because I'm gonna have to uh, go yeah, and no punch worries, mate. Punch some bit. Gotta go and do a training session now and then go and have a little sauna and an ice bath and eat some food and then got a show in Manchester tonight. So, busy day. Right, let's go and have a little sauna and an ice bath and eat some food. Quick hard session, I'm going to do five threes on the pads uh, and then I'm going to get him uh, three threes on the bags, I think. Got to put his tune on. It's a bit like driving, it's like when you get your fucking doing driving lessons and you're like really conscious what you're doing. When you do your driving test, you're like fucking hell, but then you're driving your own for two days and it's just you don't need, you're not even thinking about it. It's kind of like, what? Well, pads to spar, you can overthink it a little bit. I I I I sense over thinking in here. Good shot, nigga. Good. 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 Pull me across. Back hand. Pull me across. Back hand. Lovely. Try not to focus on him. He's gonna turn up how he turns. So. And good luck to him. Like, on the little wheel towards him. I hope he does because I really want to fucking. Like win or lose, I just want to see one of I can get in and do it, and two, it's like what I've been working on here is actually like implementable and I can, I can actually use it. There's, a, there's always the chance you go in there and he's dead explosive and just fucking kicks me in the head and I fucking like the game over, it's lights out. There's no point me going, oh, that's not gonna happen. Try to go through that whole thing of like just tell yourself you're gonna win, just tell yourself you're gonna win. Don't let losing come into your brain. It's not really how my brain works, so like, I can never really fully accept it because I was like, logically, of course you can. But, like, the best thing I, I can do now is, I know I can win. Like, there was a point where I was fucking looking at him going, I know I can beat him. He's too fucking young, he's too fit. He's got, he's got more experience than me. Um, I'm just a fucking fat comedian, do you know what I mean? But now I've got to the point where I trained hard enough and fit. I'm strong. People don't think, people don't realise how strong I am. The pressure I've got when I'm on top is very good. Um, compared to, com at, but at my level, do you know what I mean? For someone who's trained the year, so I can win. I can win this fight. So today we're going to go through some shadow boxing and then after that we'll do a little bit of pad work. Go through a few different scenarios on the pads, not too much. Obviously I'm not his coach so I'm not going to try and teach him a load of things because I'm not with him for the full camp. So I'm just going to go through probably two scenarios of what I think Paul will be bringing. So we'll just work on that today. Keep it really simple. Like I said, I'm not going to try and teach him anything we're just going to keep it really simple today and then we'll get some rounds in me and Loz are just going to do some moving around a bit of sparring he's got his knee pads on that's not a good fucking sign is it 
Okay, now go. That's to save Miley's. I'll have to save yours, alright. Yeah. Because you were here yesterday, we had the pads on, and Jake's awareness of when the pad has moved a little bit wasn't there. And uh, and the. Yeah. Hey, my team's bruised from that. <laughs> And I knew that I hit it your took, knee, yeah, it? it took my knee to a different dimension. <laughs> Ninja did. Ninja did. Good job, it's yeah. nice and light and technical. See what I'm saying? I thought you wanted a little shape. Yeah. <laughs> And be more flowy with your shots. Feel like your shots are like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can feel the tense energy. I can feel it. Everything's up, bro. Your, your, your cool. Your content. Yeah. And if you feel yourself tense up, oh, step out. You can reset. Yeah. Just reset. Yeah. Reset. Some people feel like you need to stay in there because everyone's on. No, man, reset. Yeah. Right, that's yeah. a bit stiff out. Let me go again, let me find a different angle. Yeah. Okay, let me try it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's go. First five, 15 minutes I've done. About fucking four years. Beautiful. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Breathing that warm air from the arena. Soak it all up. This is exactly how you visualized it. Feel the crowd cheering, everybody clapping. Remember that feeling in the moment. You worked hard. You've been training since before Christmas for this fight. Missing out on time with your family, time with your friends. It's been an uphill battle, but you deserve it. Make your dad proud, make your brother proud. And this is what we do it for. Human beings, we are built to test ourselves, that inner warrior. If we are not pushing ourselves and testing that every single day, we are more or less dead. So whatever it is, and this is to the world that you focus on, just try and be better 1% every day. And be grateful for the fact that you're still on this planet, you still have air in your lungs, and you still have a chance. Life is not what happened to you. It's how you take that, put it into motivation and discipline. Make the most of it. I'm proud of you, brother. It takes a lot to do what you're doing, especially on the platform that you're on. You know, you're putting yourself out there. You are what young kids, young men, and women can look up to. You've been in the public eye. You face scrutiny. You face some atrocious things. You battle through it, and now you put yourself into a fight. 95% of people in the crowd would never have had a fight. And they'll all think what's best and all, but you don't know until you put yourself in there. This is one of the truest forms of being a warrior, a man in my eyes. Putting yourself through a training camp, working hard, not being able to eat the certain foods, not being able to spend time with your family, having to train when you don't feel like it. It takes a lot of discipline, it takes a true warrior, bro. Just seen it there, two masculine males. We've both got kids. We both just want the best for our family and just batter each other. And then after it, we cuddle, we have a nice chat. And it's probably the most weirdest thing to a lot of people that two men can batter each other, test each other physically, mentally. And then after it, get a coffee, give each other a cuddle, tell each other that they love them and wish each other well on their journey through the day and through life. This is truly being a human being, a warrior. I love it. Let's go. We 
make mistakes, but we learn from them. As long as you don't make them again, you keep growing, you keep going. And I got emotional then when I, when I heard you saying like, think of your dad, think of your brother, think of your kids. And it is like, everything I do now is for them, man. Same as you, bro. Everything we do is for them and like, I'm not claiming to be a fighter, but I'm claiming to be stepping outside my comfort zone and showing my two boys that you can do what the fuck you want. You can fucking do it. You can work hard for anything. If you want to be a doctor, a vet, you put the work in and you'll get there. And as, as, as soon as I step in that cage, I've done it. I've done the journey. I've made it. I've weight cut it. I've sacrificed food. I've sacrificed going out. I've missed my family. I've trained every day. And it all just fucking. You know what? This is. Let me just pause this. Just this is one thing that I want you to remember when when you when you do you know you do the walk you do once you get in there have a little walk around the cage soak it all up when you're standing across from him I want you to say to yourself what will be will be yeah. and just have fun. That just made me emotional. I think it was the song you yeah. fucking talking. Yeah. The fact I was knackered. It's like, fuck, this has been a year of my life training for this shit. Yeah. This has been a year of my life. Yeah. I took this on and just never knew what to expect. And here we are, five weeks out, sparring a fucking pro fighter. It's nice work, man. Next time on Stage to the Cage. It's got some power on it. It might not look very pretty, but if I hit you, it's gonna fucking hurt. Jaws are going flying, apparently. That's what Paul said about me. We'll see. Yeah, like the points of contact on my pert little buttocks are toasting. 20 minutes done, my friend. Unzipping. Damage boss. Oh shit. Very good. Look how bruised my ankle is. You're a one. Be worse after the fight. Kick the fuck out of Paul's leg. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>